operate on losers and winners. But in this conversation, the only losers are our children. The only losers are our children. And we must make a commitment to do everything we can to give every child a better life. Just tell me this. Give me a little bit about uh, the backstory. What exactly happened with you and gun violence? You mean the day my son got killed? <sighs> well, to begin with, um, I'm sitting here today because I lost my 20 year old daughter to gun violence um, March 6, 2022. Okay, my son's name was Sean Elliott Mitchell Jr. Uh, he was killed in High Point March 10th, 2019. Got out of the car and um, the sheriff met me. He identified myself again and he said, um, re I hate to, um, regretfully, I have to tell you that your son was killed. 2.30 this morning. My son died on September the 16th, 2016 on 9th and Graham. They followed them down 52, and they shot more than a dozen rounds into my daughter's car. My son made a phone call and said he was on, on his way home, but he didn't make it home. And it's been eight years since my son's been dead. I don't have no justice. I don't know who did it. I understand now why the other sheriffs were there, because they're there to catch you and support, because that's what they had to do. So my son was killed at 20, 23 years of age. Uh, he was uh, gang affiliated. And um, that was the last night of his life. And it'll be a year March 6th, which is next month, that I still have no answers. So the only thing I was hearing was a lot of noise in the background. And they were saying, my daughter was telling me, Ma, fat boy got shot. And I'm like, what? It's been a journey. It has been a um, tough journey. I mean, it, it was just a circus. And you still don't have justice. And it's something that I have to live with every day, every day. Well, when my children were growing up, which I have great-grandchildren now, they could go outside and play, didn't have to worry about them. But now you can't even let your children go outside and play. My son died from just helping somebody. It didn't have anything to do with him, but it's like me telling, I done told my daughters numerous times, your brother was there in the wrong place, wrong time. Every time I hear of a shooting, whether it's local, whether it's worldwide, um, it hits a certain place. Um, it's, it triggers raw emotions. I kiss, I kiss my son pictures every night and day and tell him how much I love him and miss him. loving themselves. Mm -hmm. If you lie. love yourself, guess what? You're going to think about it. If I do this, what's going to happen to me? If you love you, you're going to think this out. If I do this, I'm going to prison for 15 years. Junior was a good fella. He loved children. He loved animals. And even though in the street he was who he was, when he came home, he was June. He was June. And we loved him. And we still love him. That's what I want him to know. Some people's circumstances are harsher than mine. Some are better. 
you know, but it's never easy to bury a child. And I just want to say that I support all grieving mothers. I look at this. Every time these officers, firemen, ambulance attendants, whoever, whenever they leave their home, they're walking in a fire of danger. And I'm not saying everybody's perfect, because we're not. But I will say this, together we'll stay. And so every time I hear that my heart, my heart hurts, aches for that family, it aches for that parent, that mother, that father, those siblings, because I know very well what they're going through. You know, I, I just thank God I'm still standing that I can speak for my son and speak up for my son, because he's not here to do it.